Do you want to build your first multiplayer virtual reality game in less than 10 minutes? If so, in today's video, we'll be going over a few multiplayer requirements within Unity to make that a reality. Trust me that by the end of this video, you'll be up and running with a fully working multiplayer virtual reality game. All right, guys, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna be creating a brand new project with the Universal 3D or URP. Just give it a name then a location and also make sure that we have connect to Unity Cloud. Since we're gonna be using Unity Cloud for the networking, then add a couple of packages. The first one is going to be the game object package, then lobby, and then we're going to be adding relay as well. Then if you go into Unity Cloud, you're gonna see that we need to set up the two different projects. So the first one is going to be the service for lobby. So we need to go ahead and enable it. Also do that for relay since we're using the actual auto matchmaking component. So it's going to rely on some of these services to be enabled. Then if you go into the package manager again, let's make sure that we add all the packages for the Meta SDK. Since we're gonna be adding building blocks, including multiplayer building blocks that are going to help us with the multiplayer features. Then go into the project setup tool and then we're going to be applying all the fixes for Android and now so the standalone platform. All right, I covered this a little bit on the co-location video, but we're gonna be doing it again since we need it for VR. Just create a new application in the MetaQuest dashboard. And then we're gonna need to also enable data use checkup because we're gonna be using some of these features within the multiplayer game. And Meta requires that if you're using this in production, so I wanna make sure that we have these capabilities approved by Meta. You're more than welcome to create as users. I already have a few in here that I'm going to be using quite a bit. Also the one that is highlighted, I have it already set up with an avatar, so just make sure that you do that as well. Then let's go ahead and copy the app ID and then we're gonna go into Unity, Tools, and then paste it into the Meta account setup guide. All right, here comes the fun part. Let's go ahead and go into building blocks and then we're gonna be adding pass-through. If you wanna do just VR, just add the camera rig, otherwise add the pass-through building block. Then we're gonna be adding auto matchmaking and then we're also gonna be adding that network avatar. Add the player name tag to display or user's name and player voice chat would be optional if you decide to use Photon. Lastly, add network grabbable object to add networking interactions in this case, I am going to disable use gravity just to keep things simpler. All right, guys, so these are all the components that were added by building blocks. So for auto matchmaking, increase the retry interval. Otherwise, Unity Cloud may throw a rate limiting error. Then go into the actual network manager. This is gonna be handling networking and then platform in it is going to handle getting some of the user information and then the network avatar is going to allow us to basically render our avatars. Then the cube, we're gonna be offsetting that a little bit because I want it to be basically positioned right in front of us when we start the experience. Going to the project setup tool one more time because we need to make sure that the new capabilities have different settings. So we need to make sure that those are also applied to your project. So we need to do that on Android and now so on the standalone platform. Now, if you want to test multiplayer features, I recommend downloading Peril Sync. And that's going to allow you to basically run multiple instances of Unity. So in this case, we're gonna be creating a brand new clone. And then if you don't know where to get it, go into GitHub and then releases, and you're gonna be able to download the file that I just launched and imported into Unity. So let's go ahead and open a new instance. And then while that's opening, let's check our email for the approvals of the data checkup. This is how this is going to look like, and we wanna make sure that those are approved before we run our Unity project either from the simulator or the actual Quest device. So if you go back to Unity and go into the Oculus platform settings, let's make sure that you have a user in the credentials here. I'm gonna be using the one that has an avatar, so I'm just gonna go ahead and type the email as well and the password. Then once you're ready to go, make sure that the other instance also has another test user. And then now we can see that the application is fully running. This is running in mixed reality. 
You can basically do this with virtual reality by just adding the camera rig building block instead of pass through. And in this instance, I'm using single player. Now let's go ahead and test it with the host in a client. You can see that I have the XR simulator on the right hand side. And then the player on the left side, it's basically me wearing the actual device so I can move it around and then the changes are synchronizing to the right hand side. I can also move my head pretty quickly and things are working really well. So if I put the controllers down and go back into the XR simulator, you can see that we can move the avatar and we can see the changes reflected on the left side. I can grab the cube, I can basically press the buttons and then I didn't set up an avatar for the actual simulator instance and that's why you're seeing that purple avatar. But the other player, the one that I have an avatar on is the one that I set up an avatar with. So that's why we can see the avatar. So this system also allows you to toggle hand tracking and then you can also go back to controllers which it's going to allow you to basically have the avatar hands mapped to the controllers. So another really cool feature that you can use with the system is that you can also control the avatars by using your keyboard from the actual XR simulator, which makes multiplayer testing a lot easier. You guys can see here that I'm moving my left controller independently of the right one because I am using the brackets to cycle between the left controller, the right controller, the actual camera, you can also, if you wanna move everything, you can also basically move all the different components, which is the camera and then both controllers. You can also go back to controllers and start moving the cube. So this system is pretty flexible when it comes to testing. When I did the collocation video, which you can watch above as well, I also use Netcode instead of Photon. The main reason is that I am more familiar with Unity multiplayer features, but I recommend testing out Photon Fusion 2 since it is powerful and can handle a large volume of players. So the steps to add Photon packages are very straightforward. Instead of adding Unity networking packages, simply replace the steps with adding Photon Fusion 2 and Voice, which is an optional package, but I mention it just in case you want to add Voice to your VR game. Similarly, for Photon Fusion, you'll be prompted to create an application, then you need to get the key, pasted into a Unity pop-up that is going to show up after installing their package. Well, if you got everything working, congratulations. If not, let me know in the comments below and I can help you out. I also recommend watching the video above, which walks you through how to create a Quest 3 game from the ground up, just in case you miss some of the steps required to get your device ready for Quest development. All right, hit the subscribe button and bell to stay up to date with VR or MR development videos. Thank you so much, everybody, for sticking around until the end. And huge thanks to my patrons for supporting my content. 